Hey everyone, uh, hopefully you guys had a wonderful spring break and those that observe Easter, hopefully you guys had a wonderful Easter uh, holiday. And so for this week in world history, uh, it's pretty uh, compatible that we are getting started on the Protestant Reformation. And so before we dive into the Protestant Reformation, uh, in Christianity, uh, if you are a Christian, you're either one in one group or the other group. You're either a Catholic or you're a Protestant. And so when it comes down to the words, if we just take a look at the words Protestant and Reformation, what exactly does that mean? And so if you notice a smaller word in Protestant, you see the word protest. And of course, when you think of the word protest, you mean it means basically to go up against something, to challenge something, to go up against an idea or 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 anything uh, really. OK, and so there was a protest movement, something that's against something. And so. These people uh, in Christianity, uh, they were protesting against Catholicism or the Catholic Church at this time because they were the most powerful and honestly the only Christian group at the time. And then you look at the word Reformation. You see a smaller word in uh, the word reform. And so the word reform means to change something. So you had a good, a, a significant group of people that wanted to change the Catholic Church. All right. So what are the causes of the Reformation itself? So before you guys went on spring break, I uploaded a PowerPoint on the Black Death. And so the Black Death, you know, it was when we think of the coronavirus, the Black Death was way worse. Uh, the Black Death killed about uh, a good 25 percent of Europe's population, if not even even for more than that. Uh, uh, and so the Black Death was nothing to play around with. Uh, so some cause of the Reformation, the Black Death basically uh, kind of brought this idea to people that the Catholic Church was was just not doing enough uh, and it just exposed the weaknesses of the church itself. You also had the clergy, which were people that worked inside of the, inside of the church. They were uneducated. Uh, they didn't really have a good background uh, and were ignorant of a lot of the causes of despair in society and in Europe. Also, uh, people were busy with worldly affairs, going and traveling, not necessarily doing a lot of spiritual work. Also, you had scientific advances which contradicted or kind of went against uh, the teachings of the Catholic Church. And then one huge issue uh, that came about was indulgences, this word in bold. And so this basically means paying money for a pardon of sins or reward for good behavior. So imagine this basically was seen as a get out of hell free card. If you were rich enough, you could just pay the Catholic Church. To, hey, you know, if I give you. I don't know, $20, uh, I can get rid of this sin of stealing from the grocery store or something like that. But if you were poor and did not have money, then you could not pay indulgences. So this was seen as very unfair towards those uh, people that did not have a lot of wealth. So at the time, this is the Catholic Church hierarchy. Who's at the top with the most amount of power to those at the bottom? So, of course, in Christianity, uh, God is seen as the most powerful entity uh, in Christianity. And then if you're a Catholic, uh, the next highest human being in the pyramid is the Pope. And, of course, we have uh, Pope Francis, who's the current uh, Pope for the Catholic Church. He's been the Pope since, I think, 2013. Uh, then uh, later on, next on the list, you have uh, cardinals, uh, archbishops, bishops, priests and monks, and then uh, those that are not in the church, which are called the laity. Uh, so this was the Catholic Church hierarchy. All right. So. 
there were early calls for church reform inside the Catholic Church. You have John Wycliffe of England who translates the Bible in the, into uh, the English language for the very first time. And so why this is important is because uh, back in England, those that were of lower financial status, uh, they basically spoke English while those at the top, uh, wealthier at the time, spoke French. Uh, and so the thing was that if you gave uh, the, uh, people that did not come from a lot of wealth the ability to read, they may be able to interpret something for themselves uh, and you know start to develop ideas that may not necessarily go along with the Catholic Church. And so that was seen as a problem. John Wycliffe was seen as a, a problem to the Catholic Church. You also have Jan Hus of Bohemia, uh, and so he had church services in the vernacular, which means that he basically, you know, spoke out uh, and had, you know, oral uh, lectures and uh, sermons inside of his church uh, that sometimes or oftentimes went against the Catholic Church. And so both of them taught that the Bible had more authority than church leaders or the pope. And so as a result, Huss was burned at the stake. There's a drawing here depicting that. And Wycliffe was given a posthumous execution. Also, you had Renaissance ideas of secularism, individualism, and Christian humanists. And so secularism kind of dives in on, you know, being more independent, not necessarily relying on religion, more of the individual person, okay? And then you had Christian humanists who basically believed that you could still live by your Christian values without necessarily going to church. And then you also had printing press to spread ideas. And so the, think of the printing press as the very first newspaper that would go around, you know, delivering the news to the people. And it might not necessarily go along with Catholic Church ideas. So what exactly was a Protestant Reformation? So a Protestant is someone who protested against the Catholic Church. And then Reformation is when people demand changes. All right. So this, of course, deals with the Christian uh, religion uh, in Christianity. Let me move my screen here. And so, like I mentioned earlier, in Christianity, there are two groups. You have those that are Catholic and then those that are Protestant. And so, of course, in Catholicism, you can have Eastern Roman uh, Catholics or just Reformed Catholics. But in Protestants, you can have so many different groups like uh Presbyterians, you can have uh, Mormons, you can have uh, Lutherans, you can have Baptists. Uh, there are so, so many different Protestant uh, groups, but they're all just formed together because they're not Catholic. All right. All right. So three key people to know uh, that were major reformers during the Protestant Reformation. You have Martin Luther, you have John Calvin, and then you have King Henry VIII of uh, England. And so just a quick little uh, side note here. Uh, of course, you guys may have heard of civil rights leader Martin Luther King Jr. And of course, Martin, he was named after uh, Protestant Reformation leader Martin Luther. All right. So Martin Luther, uh, he was a German monk who did not like uh, what the Catholic Church uh, was doing. Uh, and so he believed that faith saves people. Sorry, let me move my screen. Uh, that faith save, saves people, not just uh, good works or doing something uh, for the greater good. He also believed that the ultimate authority for Christians is the Bible and not the Pope. And in his view, no one is more important in, in God's eyes, and all humans are before God and not the Pope. So, of course, he's going to develop a huge uh, rivalry with uh, the Pope and members of the Catholic Church. So, 
uh, Luther had significant issues with the Catholic Church. And so uh, basically, he was uh, basically a, fr a friar was selling indulgences, which basically cer uh, uh, cert uh, certificates uh, that take away sins, uh, basically through indulgences. And so he had a problem with indulgences. He, thought, he basically said that, you know, it's so wrong for those that have a lot of money uh, to be able to just, you know, pay off their sins just like that. Uh, he also had issues with merchants wanted uh, usury or lending money and charging interest. And so the Catholic Church says usury is wrong. He also had uh, disagreements with the absolute power and the wealth of the church. And then he also had an issue with the domination of church by Italians. Uh, and so Martin Luther, he basically, I mean, of course, he was German. And so he saw that the Catholic Church was dominated by Italians. And so he felt that the Catholic Church basically gave a lot of favors towards the Italian region. So Martin Luther writes a very uh, famous pamphlet uh, called the 95 Thesis. These are a list of things that he thought were wrong with the Catholic Church. And so Luther criticized the Pope's power, the church ex church's extreme wealth, and then indulgences, paying to take away your sins. All right. So he would go around, him and his followers would go around and started posting uh, his thesis on uh, Catholic church doors in uh, Wittenberg, Germany. And also the Gutenberg's printing press helped spread Martin Luther's ideas very quickly. And so he gained support from people and criticism from the Catholic church. So. Martin Luther, uh, he has uh, several main teachings, but his main ones were salvation by faith alone, that you can get to heaven uh, or find your salvation by uh, having strong faith and belief. He says uh, main, main teachings is teaching based on the Bible, not what the Pope uh, says, and that all people are equal before God, no matter how rich or how poor you are. So the Pope at this time that had a lot of issues with Martin Luther was Pope Leo uh, Medici X. And so uh, the Pope, this was a Pope during the height of church corruption. And in uh, 1520, Pope Leo X ordered Luther to give up his uh, beliefs. And so Luther, uh, Martin Luther basically got the paper order that the Pope sent to him and he just basically burnt it, uh, burnt, uh, burnt the order and was later excommunicated from society. And so this is a description of Martin Luther just burning the Pope's orders. He was like, uh, screw the Pope. I'm not going to follow and listen to him. Uh, he means nothing to me. All right. So later on, uh, you had the Holy Roman Emperor at the time, King Charles V. He uh, summoned Luther to trial in the town of Worms, and he created the Edict of Worms uh, that basically declared Luther to be an outlaw and a heretic, which basically means pretty much a uh, outcast in society. And so as a result, many of his followers, uh, Martin Luther's followers, came together to form a new religious group called the Lutherans, named after Martin Luther, of course. So also there was a peasant reaction. Uh, peasants were basically those at the bottom of society, uh, essentially slaves. Uh, peasants wanted an end to serfdom, and they started to revolt in 1524. Martin Luther surprisingly does not support the revolt, and the princes of Germany ends up massacring 100,000 people, and a lot of them were the revolting peasant population. So now you had Lutherans and Catholics at war. Uh, you had the northern German princes that supported Luther, and other princes agreed to join forces against them. So this is all taking place in, uh, in Germany, in Italy. Uh, and so King Charles V declared war against the Protestants. Uh, and so there was a lot of violence and bloodshed, and it's not going to be until 1555 with the Peace of Augsburg, uh, which is a city in Germany. And so this uh, religion of each German state would be decided by its own uh, state's ruler. 
Another major player during the Protestant Reformation is King Henry VIII of England. And so early on in his life, uh, he begins uh, his reign as a devout Catholic. Uh, and if we know anything about King Henry VIII is that he has a lot of marriages. Uh, and so he initially, he and his wife, uh, uh, Catherine of Aragon, they have a daughter, Mary, but no male heir. And so King Henry VIII wanted a son, but couldn't get it from Catherine of Aragon because she started to get a bit older in age. And so he convinced that Catherine could no longer have children. And so King Henry VIII wanted a divorce. But the thing about Catholicism is that uh, divorce is essentially not allowed. And so the Pope could annul or set aside a marriage, but the Pope refused to do so because it went up against his beliefs. And so King Henry VIII called on English Parliament to pass laws ending the Pope's power in England and thus legalized his divorce. And in 1534, King Henry breaks from the Catholic Church and declared himself the head of the Church of England. And so uh, King Henry VIII had six total wives, of course, uh, some of them met very uh, violent ends, uh, especially if they could not conceive children or they could only produce uh, went our girls. And so King Catherine or sorry, Queen Catherine of Aragon, uh, she basically uh, had only one ch child, uh, Mary the first. This ended the divorce. You also had uh, Anne Boleyn, who had Queen Elizabeth the first, but she ends up getting beheaded. And so essentially, yeah, King Henry VIII uh, has a lot of blood on his hands uh, from all his marriages and uh, divorces. All right. So uh, important uh, person is Queen Elizabeth I, uh, King Henry VIII's uh, daughter uh, from Anne Boleyn, his second wife. And so... She, when she rules, she combined Catholic styles with Protestant teaching to please both uh, religions. And Queen Elizabeth I makes the Anglican Church the official church of all Great Britain. And finally, uh, the next uh, important person during the Protestant Reforma Reformation is John Calvin. And so his ideas hit the church with a abbreviation called POW, which is predestination, uh, hour, and then work. And so predestination uh, basically means God chooses who goes to heaven and you don't get there by good works. And so it is all so in his idea of predestination is that. As soon as you are conceived, it is already determined whether you go to heaven or hell, and it does not matter how good or how bad you make of your life, uh, it has already been decided upon you or for you, uh, whether or not you're going to heaven or hell. Also, for O, oh, our moral uh, lives will reveal if we're chosen by God to go to heaven or hell. And then for W, work ethic and a righteous life that honors God. And basically this is no matter whether or not you go to heaven or hell, you should still have a, um, you know, still work hard in your actual life. So predestination, John Calvin believed uh, in salvation through predestination. And it's at birth. Uh, it is decided if you will go to heaven or to hell. So uh, John Calvin, he, uh, he is from uh, or starts in Switzerland, uh, his religion called Calvinism. Uh, he went to Geneva, Switzerland and led that city uh, into spreading the religion. And he believed the ideal government was a theocracy, which is a government controlled by religious leaders. And we talked about theocracy a bit, uh, I think, earlier, earlier on when we were uh, on the unit on uh, ancient Greece. Uh, you also have John Knox. Uh, he visited uh, John Calvin in Geneva and liked his teachings. And he would relate, later uh, return to his home uh, country of Scotland. And his followers were later called Presbyterians, which, of course, is still a, an existing uh, Christian uh, sect. 
You also have the Anabaptists. They were another Christian group that split off. And so Anabaptist means to be baptized again. And they believed only people who were old enough to decide to be Christian should be baptized. And this was uh, seen as a huge red flag and a huge no-no. And so they were persecuted and killed all across uh, Europe. And so with the Protestant uh, Reformation, sorry for all these noises, uh, let me move my screen here. All right. All right. And so in Christianity, there, uh, like I mentioned earlier, there's two major groups. You had Catholics, you had Protestants. Uh, and so Protestants, I think, are about roughly make about 60 percent, 60, 70 percent of all Christians in the uh, in the world. And so, you know, whether you're Lutheran, uh, Calvinist, Presbyterian, Puritan, uh, Huguenots, Mormon, uh, Baptists, uh, Seventh-day Adventist, uh, Jehovah's Witness, all those sectors of Christianity, as long as you are not Catholic, you're considered a Protestant. All right. And so something to think about uh, is that John Calvin believed in predestination that God knows from the moment you are born uh, what will happen to you and whether or not you will go to heaven. And so, you know, it's some food for thought is if predestination is true, do we as human beings have free will? Do we really have choices uh, or is it basically all for nothing? And, you know, it's interesting thing uh, to see what you guys think. Uh, think about that. And so uh, this basically concludes this lesson on uh, the Protestant Reformation, and hopefully you guys enjoyed uh, this video.